Oh, get ready, the evening shadows fall. Don't you hear the Eliezer call? There's gonna be a wedding, our joy shall soon begin. When the camel train comes in. Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. Praise God. In this lesson, we're going to be dealing with growing up, spiritually growing up. I believe the Lord is doing a quick work in righteousness and that those that understand these things, those that see and understand the truth, will grow. They'll grow up. And those that don't see and understand these things will not grow up. Amen. Praise God. Let's open in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we know, Lord, that it's your will that we would grow, that we would grow up and develop and become like your son, to be like Jesus, that we would measure up to the full stature. We pray, Lord, that you will help us to deliver this message, anoint this message, and bless it, Lord, your people might understand things, Lord, that they may not have understood before. Open their understanding, I pray. Illuminate, Lord, and open their understanding. O oh God, that the glorious gospel, let it shine in unto them, Lord. Let them see, Lord, your purpose, your plan. We ask that you bless, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise God. We need his help, folks. Amen. We need his help. Praise God. We begin with 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. And though I give, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long. It is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up. It does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own will. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. In other words, it's not suspicious. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. 
But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, Paul is speaking, I put away childish things. Are you listening? It's time for God's people to put away childish things. Amen. Praise God. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Amen. And now abideth faith, hope, and charity. These three. But the greatest of these is charity. Praise God. Now abideth faith, hope, and charity. These three. But the greatest of these is charity. The greatest of these is charity. That's the goal. I may know that. That is the goal. Charity. Praise God. Charity out of a pure heart. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, folks, is going to be our foundational scripture verse. Charity is the greatest. But you can't have charity if you don't have faith. Are you listening? You can't have charity if you don't have hope. You cannot have hope if you don't have faith. Amen. It's like climbing a ladder. If you do not have faith, real faith, you will not have real hope. And if you don't have real hope, you're never going to arrive at charity. Amen. It's one thing to have the love of God. It's another thing to share it. And if you have any fear, any hesitation, you won't share what God has given you. His love. You won't share his love with others. Amen? You won't share the love of God with other people if there's something in you that's holding back. Amen. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19. Remember, the greatest of these is charity. That's the goal. We have hope. Faith, hope. And hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which entereth 
into within the veil. Did you hear that? Hope is an anchor that entereth into that within the veil. Listen, listen. Whither the forerunner is for us entered. Amen. Jesus Christ, he's the forerunner. He's already entered the veil. Amen, brothers and sisters. How do we follow him? Jesus said, where I'm going, you cannot follow me now. But here we see, here we see that we can follow him. He's the forerunner. He has entered in beyond the veil. Are you listening? That's where the throne of God is, where he is seated with the Father in the throne, beyond the veil. Jesus made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Dear God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Are you going to follow him, brothers and sisters? Are you going to grow up and follow him within the veil? Hebrews chapter 9, verse 1. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service in a worldly sanctuary. And there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick, the table showbread, which is called the sanctuary. This is beyond the first veil. How many know that? There were two veils. And after the second veil, which Jesus has entered, but we're speaking as far as the Old Testament. After the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all. Are you listening? Going to follow Jesus into the holiest of all? Amen. Time to grow up. Time to leave this old world behind, brothers and sisters. Beyond the second veil, it had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold. Wherein was the golden pot? that had the manna. And Aaron's rod that budded. And the tables of the covenant. How many know that the manna never got old? It never molded. It always stayed fresh in the presence of God. How many know that the rod of Aaron that budded blossomed, had almonds, never died. That rod in the presence of God. Oh, my. It was living. Amen? It was living. Amen. See, the presence of God didn't only keep that rod alive, but it also kept that manna preserved, fresh, as though it had just been baked. Dear God, 
Fear God. Praise the Lord. And the tables of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And over it, the cherubims of glory overshadowing the mercy seat. The mercy seat's a type of the throne of God. Amen. Of which we cannot speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, beyond the first veil, accomplishing the service of God. Listen. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood. He could not just go into the Holy of Holies anytime he wanted to. Once a year and not without blood. Aren't you glad with the blood of Jesus? Which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. Listen. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. While as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Listen, folks. This was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Praise God which stood only in meats and drinks and divers' washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ, being come a high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with the hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and of calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once, and he's still there into the holy of holies, into the holy place. Not into the holy place, like in the Old Testament, the first holy place. No, into the holy of holies. Having obtained eternal redemption for us, dear God, for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of the heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifying to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Did you hear that? To serve the living God. Oh, my Lord and my God. And for this cause, he's the mediator of the New Testament. That by the means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of, of eternal inheritance. 
For where the testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force only after men are dead. Do you see why Jesus died? Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Jesus is the testator. Are you listening? His blood saves, saves us. His blood washes away our sin. But when he died, he made the will good. Are you listening? The will of God. Hallelujah. And that all that God is and all that God has, he gives to you and me his will in testament as an inheritance, dear people. Whereupon, neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and the people. And this is what he said. This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Dear God, people, this is the atonement. And that was in the Old Testament. Dear God, if we could only understand what the blood of Jesus Christ does, it brings us into Union with God. Hallelujah. This is the redemption in Christ Jesus. This is the atonement. Moreover, he sprinkled with the blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood is no remission. So much for the religions today that don't teach, preach about the blood. Huh? So much for the Catholics. You never hear them talk about the blood of Jesus. You don't hear any of these religions talking about the blood. Amen. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of the things in the heavens should be purified with these. Did you hear that? All that was in the tabernacle was a pattern of the things that are in heaven. They needed to be purified with these. But the heavenly things, repeat that, brothers and sisters, you out there that are listening. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands. Anybody listening? Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are a figure of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. For us. Praise God. Oh, my Lord and my God. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, but now, 
once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. You're going to follow Jesus? You're going to enter in within the veil? And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him, are you looking for him? And unto them that look for him, shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Are you looking for him, the Lamb of God? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never, with those sacrifices, which they offered year by year, continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Oh, praise the Lord. For then would they have not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshipers once purged should have no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices, there's a remembrance again and again and again and again and again and again. Year after year, there's remembrance again and again and again. Are you listening? Are you having a hard time forgetting? Are you constantly being reminded of your sins? Listen, but in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again and again and again made of sins every year. For it is not possible. Somebody needs to talk to those over there in Jerusalem. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Amen. Mr. Hagee, it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, this is Jesus, folks. This is the word that was made flesh. Then said I, lo, I come. (laughs) In the volume of the book, it is written of me. To do thy will, O God. Amen. That's Jesus, folks. Amen. Glory to God. Above, when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin thou wouldest not. Neither hast pleasure in them, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. 
by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Are you listening? Following Jesus, folks. We're going to follow Jesus within the veil, not without being sanctified. Amen? Every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, get it, get it, let it sink in. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for the sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Are you listening? He's entered within the veil, people. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. And that's coming. How many know that day is coming? Oh, yeah. Are you expecting it like he's expecting it? For by one offering, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Wherefore, the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and into their minds will I write them and their sins and their iniquities. Get that, get that folks and their sins and their iniquities. will I remember no more. Oh, listen and their sins and their iniquities. will I remember no more more. See, the devil doesn't want you to know that. He doesn't want you to understand that. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. You want to follow Jesus. You want to enter in beyond the veil. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By a new and a living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say, his flesh Anybody listening? A new and a living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart. Is anybody out there listening? Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled with an, from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Amen. Not water baptism. The water of the word. The water of the word. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful 
that promised. Anybody listening? Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. What's Brother Joseph doing? Exhorting you. Exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see that day approaching. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. What does that mean? That means you've got to go back to Calvary. You got to go back to the cross. Hey, man, do your first works over again. But a certain fearful looking for a judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Only the blood of Jesus brings you within the veil. We have faith, hope to bring us to charity. Faith works by love. When you really have God's love and you have faith, you'll do something. You will, you will draw near to God. You won't be afraid. Amen? Charity never fails. Are you listening? He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. How much more sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, who hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. For we now know this, listen folks, we now know this, for we now, we know him, that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. How many know he's not talking to the world? He's talking to those also that are not continuing to follow him within the veil. You're just as much in trouble as the world if you don't continue to follow. I will recompense, saith the Lord, And again, the Lord shall judge his people. His people. Did you hear that? His people. That's why the scripture says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. Amen? And forgive their sins and heal their land. The Lord shall judge his people. God is no respecter of persons, folks. If you don't continue to, if you draw back, if you don't continue to follow him within the veil, into the Holy of Holies, you're no different than the world. You're no different. Jesus said to his own 12, will you also go away? Amen. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. That goes for God's people, too. Amen. Praise God. Listen to this. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back. He's talking to his people, too. Amen. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Hmm. 
but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Amen. Entering within the veil. Into heaven itself, people. Following Jesus. Amen. He's made the way. A new and living way. For us to follow him. Praise God. Within the veil. Into the holy of holies. In heaven itself. In the presence of God. Amen. Glory to the Lamb. It's not religion or being religious or doing religious things. Amen. It's not by works lest any man should boast. It's by his blood. It's by the blood of Jesus. Amen. His sacrifice. Glory to God. No more remembrance of sin. A clean conscience. Purged from dead works. To serve the living God. The blood. The blood, people, of Jesus, applied by faith, is powerful. Powerful. When you understand there's no other remedy for sin. There is no other remedy. There is no other way. Jesus said, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. No man goes unto the Father but by me. Are you listening? We must enter in to heaven itself through Christ. Through Christ. He's the door. Amen. He's the door that we enter in through. Praise God. Can you see? Do you see these things? Happy are you if you see these things. Amen. Glory to God. Your eyes are open, you're awake. You can see. Praise the Lord. Follow me, he said. Huh? Where I'm going, you can't follow me now. That's what he said to Peter. But you will follow me. You'll follow me later. Brothers and sisters, Jesus made the way. Where there was no way. By a new in a living way that he has consecrated through his own flesh, through his own body, through the veil. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. The veil has been rent in the physical temple. Are you listening? The veil was rent his flesh on the cross. Are you listening? There were two veils, one to the holy place and the other to the holy of holies. The first veil is our flesh. That's got to be rent. 
The second veil is his flesh. That was rent at Calvary. You will never understand the truth if you don't first enter into the first veil beyond your flesh where the candlestick is, where the light is, where the, sh- where the uh, manor is, or the showbread, I should say. Listen, you will never enter into the Holy of Holies if you don't first deal with your own flesh. Amen? And it's in the holy place that we prepare to enter into the Holy of Holies. Enter through His flesh. Through that veil. Into His very presence. Amen. Glory to God. That's where we are right now. If you are in the spirit, you're you're there right now. We are in, we are beyond the second veil right now. Amen. Glory to God. Entering his glory to be changed, to be transformed. Amen. Glory to God, people. Being no more children. Being no more carnal. Be spiritual. Developing, growing up into him. To the fullness. To be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. God bless you. In the name of Jesus.